Systems of equations involves solving for two unknown variables by using two equations. When you have very simple equations, using the graphing method might be what's best. But otherwise, if you have higher numbers involved or numbers in front of all of your variables, the substitution method is a great option as well. And basically what it does is you eliminate one of the variables and represent its value in terms of the second one in order to just solve for one variable at a time. That might sound a little complicated. Basically, you can't solve for two variables at the exact same time, so we have to find a way to get rid of one of the variables, solve for the other one, and then solve for that second variable. I'll show you here. So the, the starting point is you have to get either your x or your y isolated. I have y by itself here. And what is y worth? y is worth 5 minus 4 times x. So if this had just said y equals 3, what would I have done in that second equation? Well, I would have plugged in that 3 in for y here. So I'm doing that exact same thing. We're just going to have more than one number involved. So we are going to take what y is worth in terms of x. We're taking y's x value, and we are substituting it in for y. So now I have 2x minus 3 times y's value, and y is 5 minus 4x, and it's supposed to then equal 13. I now am just solving for one variable. I'm solving for the x. So then I use the rules of the distributive property, negative 3 times 5, so I have 2x minus 15, Negative 3 times negative 4x is positive 12x equals 13. Then I combine like terms. 2x and 12x makes 14x minus 15 equals 13. I use the addition principle to get the 15 off of the side of the x because I'm working on isolating and solving x. So if I add 15 to both sides, I get 28. 14x equals 28. So when I divide both sides by 14, how many times does 14 go into 28? It's twice. So I get x equals 2. Now that I have a value for x, I can go and plug it in here because when I solve this, that tells me what y is worth. So if I go 5 minus 4 times 2, well, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. So my solution for y needs to be negative 3. Now let's double check that that actually works for both equations. So currently, I believe my solution is 2 and negative 3. So if I go 2 times x minus 3 times y, do I get a 13? 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Is that 13? Yep. And I know it worked here because that's how I came up with negative 3 in the first place. So since it worked for both, this is officially my solution. So you solve for one variable, and once you get that value, plug it in, to one of your earlier equations to solve for your second value. So if you have a system here and you don't have one of your variables already isolated, you need to rewrite one of them so that a variable is by itself. If I look at these two, here is a t that's by itself. There's no number on it, so this is going to be the easiest to isolate. I need to get rid of the 5s from this side so that t is by itself. So if I subtract 5s, I now have t equals 8 minus 5s. I now have what t is worth in terms of s. So I can use this value in place of t, substitute it. So take that, plug it in. So 3s minus 4 times t's value, which is 8 minus 5s, equals 14. Again, now I'm only solving for the s, not worrying about the t until I have a value for s. Distribute 3s minus 32 
plus 20s equals 14. I combine my life terms to get 23s. Those are gone. And then I need to add 32 to each side to get rid of it on the side of the s. So 2 and 4 is 6, 1 and 3 is 4. So when I divide both sides by 23, s is going to equal 2. Now I go and I plug that, that back into one of my equations. I can plug it into this original one, I can plug it into this original one, or I can plug it into this modified one. It all works out the same. For me, I like to plug it into the modified ones where a variable is already isolated, so that when I simplify the values, it is that second unknown value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go 8 minus 5 times s. s is 2. So 8 minus 10 equals negative 2. So my solution is 2 and negative 2. And if you're wondering, oh, which is x and y, whatever alphabetically comes first is the x. S comes before T, so X for S, uh, T for the Y. And then you could double check by plugging it into your other equation. 3 times 2 is 6. And negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. 6 plus 8 is 14, so I know it's a solution to both equations. In this final example here, I have two equations, and in both of them, there is a coefficient in front of my variables. So I need to figure out which equation is going to be the easiest to simplify the number in front of a variable off of it. So if I look at this, I know that 2 can evenly divide into 4 and 16. So this is going to be the one that I want to isolate. I'm going to move the 4p over, which leaves me with negative 2q equals negative 4p plus 16. Now to get the Q isolated, I divide negative 2 off of all of the numbers. This leaves me with Q equals 2P because negative 4 and negative 2 simplifies to positive 2 and 16 divided by negative 2 is negative 8. So here is Q's value in terms of P. I can now take this and plug this into P for my second equation. 5 times p. Oh, p. oh, I was trying to solve for the wrong one. There we go. Always double check your variables. Okay, so p is 5p plus 7 times q's value, which is 2p minus 8 equals 1. Distribute 5p plus 14p minus 56 equals 1. Then I can combine my like terms to get 19p and add 56 to both sides. So that is going to be 57. And if I think about it, what factor, 9 times what, lets me end up with a number ending in 7? Well, 9 times 3 gives me 27. Um, and so I'm going to say that 19 goes into 57 three times, plus this is almost 20, this is almost 60. 20 goes into 60 three times, so P is going to be 3. Feel free to use your calculator, I'm just trying to mental math it here. So we have a solution for P. Let's go ahead and plug it in so that we can find out what Q is. P times uh, 2, so 2 times 3 minus 8 gives me 6 minus 8. It's going to give me a negative 2. All of my examples seem to have negative 2 for the y, but it's all good. And you write your answers in a system as an ordered pair, because if we graph this, this is the x and y value that would appear in the intersection of my lines graph.